Well, the Orioles return to their closer, Craig Kimbrell. Obviously not a closed situation. He has been outstanding as of late. Six consecutive scoreless appearances. He has eighth appearance of the year. Four for five in save opportunities. Look at the strikeout to walk ratio. 13 strikeouts, no walks. Opponents hitting 130 off the right-hander, Kimbrell. Well, you come to the Orioles, you come to this pitching program, and whether you're 24, whether you're 34, whether you're Craig Kimbrell, who will turn 36 next month, there is still a lot you can do. Better yourself, learn and grow. And Kimbrell's pitching some of the best baseball, and he's pitched in a while. He was the best reliever in baseball early in the 2010s, and he's been exceptional this year on to face Margot Martin and Castro six seven eight and there's a strike poured into Manuel Margot Inyad Cano in an inning walked a batter struck out two and now Kimbrell to try to get this game to the bottom of the ninth in a two two tie breaking ball one and one. Good piece by Ben Clemens in fan graphs yesterday. So, you know, Kimbrell hasn't felt like a truly elite closer the last few years. Good closer. And a pretty elite start to the year. 13 strikeouts at a 24 batters faced. Only three hits allowed are singles. Yeah, velocity was down a little bit early. Now, the weather wasn't good. The weather was cool. Felt like his last two or three appearances, that velo starting to tick up a little bit. It's a lot of a lot of fastballs toward the top of the zone and that breaking ball behind it. And a very, very late decision there. It's a timer violation. Kimball didn't get it off. And David Rackley called that right as Craig was going into the motion. It is an automatic ball two and two. Second timer violation of the year against Kimball who had the most timer violations of any pitcher last season. And that whirling curveball fouled away. The swinging strike numbers are a little down for Kimball this year. A lot of called strikes, though. And he's been able to bend in that curveball beautifully. Yeah, that curveball's got a little bit different shape than most curveballs. It's got a lot of right to left in it. Just ask Margot about the shape right now. It's a strikeout to lead off the ninth. The Orioles ninth to two walks as a team. It's almost like a sweeping curveball if there is such a thing. As much depth it's got in it, it's got just as much horizontal in it as well. I mean, if he didn't call it a curveball and we just looked at that pitch, he might be liable to yeah. call it a sweeper. Griffin, Griffin Jacks. Jacks, yeah. Haven't seen him yet in this series. All one fastball outside to Martin. Kimberlin and Cano both pitching for a third time in four days. Craig Kimberl is the Orioles' sixth pitcher today in a 2 2 game. Martin a base hit in the seventh scored one of the two runs that inning for Minnesota their only offense today. There's a knee high strike. Cool and Webb gave up runs in the seventh inning after five and two thirds magnificent innings from Albert Suarez three hits no walk struck out four. Swing and a miss two and two. Kimbrell fell behind 2 and 0. Oh. And he misses inside 3 and 2. Yeah, it was close, but you'll see it right there. Just about two balls probably off the inside corner. Got that one to the inside corner, popped up by Martin. Hayes is on the case, and Kimbrell's got the first two outs in the ninth. Now retired 23 of 26 batters face this year. 
Remarkable stop by Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, the command for me is really tightened up. You can see those last two pitches. Rutschman was set up on the inside part of the plate. Just missed with the first one. And got that one right in on the hands of Austin Martin. Willie Castro, one for three. Castro goes after the first pitch and smacks it right to the glove of Mountcastle. Ryan will be due up second after Santander with the Orioles looking for a walk-off. Anthony Santander's last swing tied this game in the seventh inning. His next swing could win it in the ninth. Two walk-off home runs career. You remember this one, a Friday night last July 28th after a long rain delay. Snapped a scoreless tie and walked off the Yankees for a 1-0 win. Santander with a right-handed home run in the game. Will bat left-handed here against Griffin Jacks, who takes over for Brock Stewart in the Minnesota bottom half of the ninth. Stewart was electric in inning into third. One hit, struck out three, and now Jacks has got a great breaking ball. Yeah, 1.35 ERA, eight strikeouts. Opponents hitting 136 off the right-hander, Jacks. Hmm. Zone may be getting a little bit more expansive here. Strike one to Santander. Anthony, then Ryan Mountcastle, then Cedric Mullins. Jorge Mateo is on the bench, ready to pinch run if Anthony can get on base. That one shot right over the screen. Boy, Griffin Jackson's not allowed a base hit on his four seam fastball this year. That's how good it's been. Used it about 22% of the time. Heavy on the sweeper, 47% of the time. Anthony fouled out to the catcher, flying out to the warning track and right, and then homered to Mr. Splash's perch in the seventh. One two pitch. Up and away, Jax strikes him out. The 12th K for Minnesota pitching. Griffin Jax can do it. And there's that fastball. Low release point, a lot of spin, and right above the top of the zone. Griffin Jax is the first Air Force graduate to play in the majors. He still serves our nation as an officer in the Air Force Reserve and is currently pursuing a graduate degree in business administration from Colorado State. How about that. As a first Air Force graduate to play above single A. Here we are, not far down the road from Naval Academy in Annapolis. Griffin Jacks representing the Air Force. Ryan Mountcastle. Base hit, left center field. Mountcastle to first. Mountcastle will hold right there. And the Orioles have the game winning run on at first base on a Ryan Mountcastle hit. Today's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Not going to pinch run a Jorge Mateo here. Mountcastle runs well. Cedric Mullins, the batter, one on, one out. Mullins takes ball one. Maybe, just maybe, Mateo runs at Mountcastle, gets to second or third, but they'll hold him back for now. Big swing and a miss by Cedric on the changeup. Johan Ramirez getting heated up in that Oriole bullpen. Down the left field line, Miranda gives it a look. That ball is going to get out of play. Cedric Mullins, three career walk-off plate appearances. You all may remember the last. September 17th against Tampa Bay, the walk-off sack fly on the day where the Orioles clinched their return to the postseason. Never hit a walk-off home run. Until now, maybe, deep right field, Cedric Mullins, good night!
Six. Sweet dreams, Minnesota. Cedric Mullins with the first walk-off home run of his career, ending a sensational series. Five straight games for the Orioles, three or more home runs. The hydration station waiting at home plate for a Cedric Mullins game winner. Eighth walk-off by the Orioles now. Or eighth come from behind victory, I should say, for the Orioles in their 12 victories. And this time it is Cedric Mullins. Looked like a changeup. It was something off speed. Got a little bit out in front of it. Boy, he kept his hands back and found the barrel. Watch Cedric just kind of dip into his legs right here. High velocity fastball. You got to get your foot down and go. But this is that changeup. There's a great look at it. Watch him just kind of dip down, head down, nose on it. Perfect swing, 92 miles an hour. See ya. Griffin Jacks had no interest in watching. The rest of us did. The Orioles' third walk-off of the year and the first ever walk-off home plate hydration station celebration caps off a 4-2 win.